So welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, October 8th, 2023, and in roughly just one month, the general election for the state of Kentucky, Mississippi, and Louisiana will be conducted alongside many state legislative races, but none more important than the gubernatorial elections that are set to occur in these states. Now, the state of Kentucky is a state in the 2020 presidential election that voted for President Trump by a margin of 26%. It's a solid red state, one of the most Republican in the entire nation, and nearly every single county in the last election went to the Republicans, with the exception of two that were barely Democratic districts. Now, Looking at the state of Kentucky, again, we know it is this state that Republicans have it locked down. Republicans practically control nearly every single statewide uh, election, every single statewide position, alongside the two Senate races and numerous House of Representative seats that they send to Washington, D.C. However, in 2019, the incumbent governor at the time, Governor Matt Bevin, who won his election in a pretty substantial amount back in 2015, was up for re-election. He was largely seen as this governor who picked a lot of fights, someone who had often been uh, countered by the state legislature, by Republicans within the state, someone who had numerous scandals and a lot of baggage coming into this election. Now, although he had this, keep in mind, we're working in a state that President Trump won in the last election prior to this one by 30 points. So. 2020, 2016, both accurate representations and depictions of the state's overall electoral composition, and yet somehow a Democrat won. Now, Andy Bashir at the time was also a statewide official. He was the attorney general and is someone who has a pretty strong history in the state of Kentucky alongside a family dynasty that has concluded in his victory to the governor's race. But as we started to get into the 2020 presidential election, as partisanship started to take hold across numerous Senate races and House races that refused to vote for incumbents, even if they were people they had voted for in multiple elections prior, we had seen polarization equipped in full force in the 2020 election and honestly quite beyond. Now, the state of Kentucky is a particular point of interest because right now the Democrats have a pretty insurmountable lead. A month out from the election, Emerson College shows Andy Bashir with a 16-point advantage over his opponent, the Attorney General, Daniel Cameron. Now, I'll caution this and say, I do not believe that Democrats are up by 16 points. I think there is a flaw in this poll if they are finding Andy Bashir up by 16. I can imagine that by the end of the results, there is some reality in which Andy Bashir does win by 8 to 9 points. Uh, he's a very popular governor. We will dive into that in just a moment. But this 16 points should not be taken alone at that, right? Andy Bashir is still under around 15, uh, under 50%, which is something to keep in mind. But one point of interest, too, that gives this poll a little bit more validity is that amongst the same sample that chooses Andy Bashir by 16 points, you find that they choose Donald Trump by 29 percentage points. Now, remember, that magic number from 2020 is 26%. So Donald Trump has, in fact, improved on his margin from the last election. But on the governor's race, again, the same electorate, the same people that are pro-Trump, Andy Bashir demolishes his Republican opponent. Now, back in 2019, the polls weren't super accurate. Trafalgar released one right before the election, but nobody really saw this race as one that Democrats were the favorites to win. In fact, no poll between the beginning of the year, 2019, and Election Day had the Democrats in the advantage. In fact, the final poll right before the election, you found one in June that had Matt Bevin up by six. Then it was tied, according to Mason Dixon, and Trafalgar had Bevin up by five. Andy Bashir ultimately came ahead. Again, back in 2016, Donald Trump won the state by 30 points. And sometimes the polls do underestimate Republicans. For sure, 2016 was an example of that. But when you take a look specifically at 2019, the most recent governor's race in the state, you can't really argue that they underestimated Republicans by any metric whatsoever. So to see Andy Bashir in 2019 outperform the polls, I question how accurate are these, number one, and number two, could that be our reality now? The average here would put Andy Bashir up by roughly eight, nine points. So looking at the reason for this, it actually isn't too difficult to imagine why Andy Bashir has a really good shot at winning this election, despite being a Democrat in a red state. For one, he is the most popular Democratic governor in the country. That means he's up against governors like Gavin Newsom and Kathy Hochul uh, and Wes Moore and, and many prominent Democratic figures where Andy Bashir somehow is able to captivate and win over these voters in this red state. Now, when I say he's the most popular governor in the entire country on the Democratic side, I do mean that. And I think that, you know, although sometimes it sways back and forth between him being number one or number two, he still does extremely well. 
Amongst voters in the state of Kentucky, he has a 64% approval rating. Another thing to point out, just because you approve of a politician doesn't mean you're going to vote for them. There are plenty of people who say, I like Andy Bashir, but a Republican would be better. He's not doing a bad job as a Democrat. He's outperforming my expectations, and I like what he's doing, but a Republican, Daniel Cameron, would be better because we have the nominees at this point well into the election. But seeing that 64%, those numbers are coming from a lot of important voting groups. 90% of Democrats approve of him. That's higher than President Biden. 59% of independents, wickedly higher than President Biden. And 49% of Republicans approve of the job, the majority for the first time ever, or plurality, but the first time ever in the polling being done under Governor Andy Bashir, the plurality of Republican voters approve of the job that he is doing, which means there isn't this large and concerted effort to push out this Democratic governor. Now, it might be a very similar result to what we saw in 2019. That's because Andy Bashir again, is working at a disadvantage of being in a ruby red state. I mean, for Matt Bevin as a Republican incumbent to have lost this state, he must have been exceptionally unpopular, right? This isn't a swing state like Pennsylvania or Michigan, where things sway back and forth depending on the electorate. This, it was a very, very big push from Republicans and Democrats to get out Matt Bevin. And I think some Republicans honestly voted for Andy Bashir because they thought he was a better alternative, but would never have committed to voting for him for a re-election, regardless of his election performance. And now people are second guessing that because they believe him to be doing a good job. There also is this fact that Governor Andy Bashir doesn't have as much of a character issue as Daniel Cameron. Daniel Cameron has been facing off against a number of political ads that have tied him to Matt Bevin's controversies, said that he has been a, defense, uh, a, de uh, a defending member of Governor Bevin. And the reason why that matters is because Matt Bevin went down in infamy, right? He's that Republican governor who was demolished in his own home state in a state that should have been a cakewalk re-election. Think about how many Republican governors are re-elected without even launching a campaign. Just announce the re-election, maybe hold one or two rallies. Take a look at states like Alabama. Take a look at states like Tennessee that rival the state of Kentucky in partisanship. But the Republican governors there don't have to stress. They don't have to worry because they don't need to. Because they were, plainly put, just conservative. They were just the Republicans. Matt Bevin was so unpopular. So unpopular. It is incomprehensible that a Trump plus 30 electorate three years later would elect a Democrat. A Democrat who, quite frankly, allies with you know, many, many national Democrats on plenty of issues, unless there was a reason to do so. And I think the reason that now Andy Bashir does so well is because he's likable, but also because Daniel Cameron simply is not. Now, they don't have any polls, I believe, on uh, Daniel Cameron. But what I will do is go ahead and take a look at this Emerson College poll. I think this would be uh, very interesting for us to take a quick look at. So let's go ahead and see if they have uh, any approval for uh, Governor Andy Bashir and also for Daniel Cameron, a 44% approval amongst, 44% uh, uh, of support amongst voters or approving uh, Daniel Cam uh, of Governor Andy Bashir. I don't know why I am reading this along the same time I was talking. Okay, here's what I was looking for. This is what the main thing that I wanted to point out. 44% of independent voters support Andy Bashir, but 28% of Republican voter support, uh, Andy Bashir. That's where this number is coming from, right? This 16% can be explained by these numbers. Now, I don't think that will necessarily come to fruition on election day. I think it will be uh, a closer than 16%, but I certainly think there is a reason that Andy Bashir is able to have such a strong lead so late into the game. And, you know, seeing this compared and contrasted with the Trump plus 29 versus Bashir plus 16, there are plenty of crossover voters. Even if this poll was inaccurate in a massive way, right? Because I do think this election will be a lot closer. But even if it was, it goes to show that there absolutely are, proven by the data, substantial amounts of crossover voters who say, you know, I disapprove of the job that President Biden is doing, but I like Governor Bashir and I'm going to vote for him. And you see that too with that poll he had even mentioned. Joe Biden has a 22% approval rating across the state of Kentucky. Keep in mind, the last election, he won just 36% of the vote. So a significant portion of his own base is disgruntled with the president. Yet somehow, Andy Bashir is seeing no repercussions for that. Zero, right? None whatsoever. And that's a very good thing. And I think moving forward into this election, there's a reason why, too. The expectations here are that Democrats win. Cook political report, inside elections, Larry Sabato's crystal ball, Democrats are in the advantage. 
whether lean or tilt Democrat, that's not where this race should be. Now, going back to 2019, we can see exactly how people viewed this back then. Lean Republican, toss up, toss up, not as advantageous. And the polling in the state hadn't been super kind to uh, Andy Bashir. Now, there was one Democratic fielded poll, and I caution all these Democratic polls because we know that they're wrong on purpose. They're not wrong on purpose, but they skew. They absolutely skew. And we knew that 55 to 36 from a partisan group was going to come out with a result. That was that was bad, right, for uh, either side. It was not going to give us an accurate depiction. But we can see that this time around, the expectations were honestly worse for Andy Bashir, And yet he still ended up coming out ahead. Now, one early sign that should have been something that Matt Bevin should have realized was an issue was when he was facing off against a primary challenger and only won by about 14 points. That is a huge amount uh, of support for opposing candidates when you as the incumbent should be landsliding. Now, Andy Bashir also faced off in a very close race. He won by about six points across the state. He faced off against uh, Rocky Adkins, who was the minority leader of the Kentucky House of Representatives. But Andy Bashir was the son of the former governor. He's the attorney general. And I also think he probably was going to have the best chance too in the general election. Uh, but we can see here that in a lot of this data, right, Matt Bevin should have done better. Matt Bevin should have won. He had Donald Trump's endorsement, Mike Pence's endorsement, Ben Carson, Rand Paul, right? Numerous people across the United States, across the state itself. This time around, we're starting to see something similar. Now, uh, Daniel Cameron won this primary with 47.7% of the vote. So it was much more of a landslide than I think, uh, you know, Democrats were hoping because it would have showed more disconnection uh, between Republican voters and himself, but he's not the incumbent. So it's a little bit different there. Uh, Andy Bashir had a very easy re-election, re-nomination process. There was no consideration there whatsoever. But again, in this general election, you see that Daniel Cameron is yet again endorsed by uh, Donald Trump, yet again endorsed by Ben Carson. Rand Paul, the same people who endorsed Matt Bevin, are endorsing Daniel Cameron. It makes sense, right? These are the top Republicans across the state, and they're meant to energize voters for Daniel Cameron in the same way that they energized voters for them in the last election, the last Senate election, the last House election, whatever it might be. I'm not sure. I'm not convinced as to how successful this will be. But Daniel Cameron does technically have more of a backing than Matt Bevin did in that last election, despite being an incumbent. But again, poll after poll after poll shows Andy Bashir in a much better place. I, again, will caution and say I believe the race will be closer than the one that we've seen from Emerson College. One that I think was extremely interesting that I should have covered when it came out was that Daniel Cameron and his campaign fielded a poll with WPAI, WPAI Intelligence. And you can see the poll here. This is a Republican-led poll that shows Andy Bashir with a six-point advantage over Daniel Cameron. When you take a look at the poll that was done just three weeks prior, it was an eight-point advantage. At this rate by the election, at best, he's tied. And that probably won't be seeing much swaying between September 28th and November 7th, because voters simply don't change that much in the final stretch of the campaign season, especially in an election that's not nationalized not being popularized in the way that the presidential or a Senate race or a House race even might be, because the implications are very local. And if voters do like Andy Bashir right now, which newsflash, they do, he won't have any type of repercussions when it comes down to Senate composition, House composition, presidential election. I could imagine that if Andy Bashir was running against Donald Trump for the presidency, Andy Bashir would lose the state. Even as the governor, I believe that. And we saw it happen in states like Montana, where Governor Steve Bullock, when transitioned from a governor's race that he won alongside President Trump's election in 2016, ran for Senate in 2020, but it was a national race. It would have mattered for composition in the U.S. Senate. It would have mattered for overall partisan control. And so Democrats lost it, even though he was a popular governor. But when it comes down to these individualized races, it is absolutely possible and more likely than not that Andy Bashir wins this race against Daniel Cameron. And it's one that I would say will just show that the Democratic enthusiasm and support across these states, across specifically the state of Kentucky, still very much exists for certain candidates. And it also goes to show that Democrats are not being swept away because of President Biden's disapproval, unlike the case in 2016 through 2020. President Trump's disapproval was largely the reason for numerous losses by the Republican Party. At least this time, Democrats have won nearly every single competitive race, nearly won every single competitive special election. I mean, it is 
fascinating to see the difference between what President Trump can do in terms of weighing down the GOP and President Biden's practical inability to weigh down the Democratic Party. The thing that will matter the most, though, the next election is that President Biden may weigh down himself. And we will find out how exactly that will end up. But should Democrats win this race in the state of Kentucky, it will prove that the enthusiasm very much still does exist, even in an era outside of President Trump's presidency and President Biden's level of approval or disapproval might be negligible to the voters in the state of Kentucky. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.